Hey everyone and welcome to this new video in the AWS playlist. In this video, I will teach you AWS IAM. So AWS IAM or Identity Access Management is used to provide access to services or workloads in your AWS account to users in your company or maybe to other AWS services. If you are new to this channel, please make sure to check out other videos in this playlist and also subscribe to CloudChamp. By the end of this video, you will understand what is IAM, how to use IAM as a DevOps engineer, what are users, groups, roles, and how to create them through hands-on examples. So let's get into it. Okay, let's go and sign in to my AWS account. Notice there are two options here. Sign in using your root user or sign in using IAM user. You can log into your account using root user by putting the email ID that you use to create your AWS account. You can also choose to sign in using an IAM user IAM user will have certain permissions, whereas root user has all the permissions, which could be checking billings or deleting the account completely. This is why AWS does not recommend you using or sharing your root user credential. But for now, I don't have any IAM user, so I will be showing you how to create an IAM user, what is an IAM user, how to get permissions and everything in this video. Let's go ahead and log into my account. Now I will go ahead and log into my account using root user. All right, so I'm now inside my AWS account and you can find IAM service in the security identity and compliance section, IAM, which is used for managing access to AWS resources. If you don't find it here, you can just search for IAM in the search bar and you can go to IAM service. So the top features of this service includes groups, users, roles, policies. We are going to be learning about what are users, groups, roles, and how to attach policies to them. So as you can see right now, I have three different users, Alex, Intern, and Rajesh. If you want to give access to your AWS services, you should be creating users for them rather than giving them root user credential. So you can see this Intern user has access to EC2 read-only access, also has access to VPC full access. Permissions are given to users, groups, or roles using policies. Now to explain you this more properly, before we go ahead and create any users or do some hands-on, Let's look into some theory now. When learning about AWS IAM or Identity Access Management, you need to understand what are IAM users and how they work, what are IAM groups, what are IAM roles, and what are IAM policies. So we will be learning each one of them starting with IAM user. So to understand what is IAM user, let me help you with an example. So let's say there's a new developer in your company and as a DevOps engineer, you need to give this developer access to EC2 service so he can start working on the website which is present on EC2. So using AWS IAM user, you can give access to physical users in your company to a particular service in AWS. Let me show you how it is done with the hands-on demo of creating an IAM user. To create an IAM user, you need to go to this IAM service. In the dashboard, you can see users on the left side. Right now, I have these three users. If I want to create a new one, I'm going to click on Create User button. Once I click on this, it is asking me for a username. Let's say the new developer name is Brian. I want Brian to access AWS Management Console, which is this console here. And I don't want to create IDP Center. I want to create an IAM user. Then you can choose to give the password, which could be auto-generated password by AWS, or you can choose to give your own custom password if you want. I'm going to select auto-generated password, and I'm going to check the option, which is going to let users create a new password at next sign-in. So when I give this permission to change the password, AWS will automatically give this user IAM user change password policy, which will allow them to change their own password. If I show you what this policy does, you can check here, Using this policy, the user can change the password. Allow access to change password for this particular username. Also allow to get password policy. And you can also see the same in the summary option, where you get access to IAM service to read and write on multiple resources. So I'm going to check this, which means automatically we are attaching a policy, which is IAM user change password policy. In AWS, if you want to give access to users, groups, and roles, you need to attach a policy similar to this. According to our scenario, we want Brian user to get access to EC2 so he can start working on the website, which is on EC2 instance. So I'm going to click on next. 
And if you want to give access to an IAM user, you can do it three ways. Either adding the user to a group or by copying a permission from an existing user to Brian or attaching policies directly. Right now, I don't have any group which has only EC2 access, so I'm not going to attach that. I also don't have any users which only have EC2 access, they have more than EC2, so I'm going to attach policies directly. And here you get the list of all the different policies that are managed by AWS, although you can also create your own policy. So I'm going to attach EC2 access policy, so let's search for EC2 here, and you get all the policies related to EC2. You can check this one is EC2 full access policy, and if I click on this plus icon, it shows me allow all EC2 actions on every resource. Allow all elastic load balancing actions on every resource. So here you get all actions, which means EC2 full access. Similarly, if you check this one, this is read only access. So you are only going to get describe access, not full access. So I'm going to attach EC2 full access, click on next, and I can review all the settings. So the username is Brian, password is auto generated. I want the user to reset it. Policies attached include Amazon EC2 full access and also I am user change because of this. And that's my user. So I'm going to click on create user. And this will go ahead and create a user for me. Now I can send this user details to Brian on the mail, or I can also download CSV. So I'm going to download CSV now. And let's sign in to my AWS account using Brian credentials to see if Brian can actually access EC2 or any other service too. I'm going to open up incognito mode because you cannot have two sessions in a browser. So now when I paste the sign in link present here, which includes my account ID, I will be then able to log into my account using IAM user. So you can see now the account ID is here. The username is Brian and the password is the auto generated password. Once I click on this, you can see it's asking me to change the password because we have enabled password reset option. Let's put the password. Once I do this, now I am going to be logged in to my AWS account using the IAM user Brian, which you can see here. According to the policies attached, Brian should be able to do anything he wants in EC2 because EC2 is given full access. So Brian can create new instances, Brian can delete any instances, or can also stop them. Let me see if Brian can actually see the instance in the North Virginia region. If Brian has access, he would be able to delete this instance. Right now, this instance is in stop state. I click on instance state, delete instance. I have successfully deleted the instance only because Brian has access to me seeking. Whereas if I go to S3 and see what buckets I have in my S3 buckets, Brian will not be able to check any buckets or not even create a bucket because we don't have permissions to so list a bucket. I cannot create a bucket because I don't have permissions. So this is how you create IAM user and give them only required access rather than giving them all access. According to AWS best practice, you should be giving access only to required services rather than giving them extra permissions, which is also known as least privilege principle. So this is how you create an IAM user. Let's talk about IAM user groups. So IAM user group is a collection of IAM users use groups to specify permissions for a collection of users. In simple words, IAM user group is just a collection of IAM users. So let's say along with Brian, there are four more users that you want to manage. So instead of managing them singularly, you can put them all in the group and manage them all at once. Let me show you an example. Let's go ahead and create a group. I want to create a group for developers. I'll say developers. And in this group, I want to put Brian, Alex, and Rajesh which are three developers in my company. So now I want this three users to have same permissions, which is managing RDS because they are all working on a database right now. So I will give them Amazon RDS full access. Amazon RDS is a database service in AWS and we will be learning about that. According to this policy, you are giving all actions on RDS database. So they can do anything like creating databases, deleting database, changing security group and lot more. I'm going to go ahead and click on create user group. Once this group is created, I will be able to manage all these different users at once using a user group. This is actually a best practice. So rather than managing a user individually, you can put them in a group and manage them all at once. So now you can see when I click on Brian here, Brian will have its own existing policies along with RDS full access, 
which is provided by the group developers. So now if there's any new user who is also a developer, rather than giving them access separately, we can directly put them in a group. So let's quickly do that here. I'm going to click a create a user and name this as new dev or new developer. I want to give them access to AWS management console, auto-generated password. Uh, I don't want them to change the password, click on next. I'm going to put them in a group named as developers and they will be getting the access, which is RDS full access. And click on next, click on the create user. Now, if you look at this user here, by clicking on new user, you will be able to see that this user has RDS full access provided by the group. Now I can manage this user because it is in the group. If it is out of the group, it will have no permissions attached. So this is how you create a group. Now an IAM user can be in a single group, it can also be in multiple groups, and it can also be in no group. So this is IAM user group used to manage collection of IAM users. Now let's talk about IAM policies. IAM policies are responsible to give permissions and define what can a user group and role access in your AWS account. You can see here, a policy is an object in AWS that defines permission. And this is what an IAM policy looks like. It is a JSON document that defines what should be allowed or what action should be allowed in what resource. For example, if you check this policy here, which is the administrator access policy, it says allow all actions on every resource. So if you attach this policy to a user group or role, they can do anything inside your AWS because it is saying allow all actions on every resource. So inside a policy, you will have effect, action, and resource. Effect is either going to be allow or deny, which defines if something is allowed or denied. Action is going to be an API call, which could be a get instance, delete instance, describe instance, anything. Resource is going to be a particular resource, which could be an EC2 instance, S3 bucket, a particular VPC, a particular RDS database, or a star, which means everything. So the star here is a wildcard. Let me show you how to create a policy very quick. So when I click on create policy here, you can create a policy either using the visual editor or using JSON here. So I can show you using the JSON first. So let's consider the scenario. You have a website on EC2 instance and you want to access objects or images in your S3 buckets so that they can be shown on your website. By default, AWS does not provide access to any services. So you will have to create a policy that should be giving access to S3 bucket on a particular bucket or will be all buckets. So I'll say, create a policy for S3. So I'll search for S3 here. In this, I can define an action which will be present inside this action here. So it could be list action, which will only make sure that you only list, don't delete or create anything. Or you can also get more uh, read write actions as well. So for now, to make things easy, I'm going to select all actions which will include everything you can do on S3 bucket. And then you can also select a particular resource if you want. So if I have a particular S3 bucket that I want to choose, I can choose that here. Let's say I click on bucket. I can choose a particular bucket by specifying a name. Or else, if I want to select every resource, I'll put this as star, which means everything is allowed. You can now also check that in visual editor. Right? You can see it says S3 all actions. Once this policy is created, I can then attach this policy to either users, groups, or roles. So now we have understood policies are JSON documents that are attached to users, groups, or roles. In this policies, you are defining permissions, which could be either allow or deny, what actions are allowed or denied on what different resources. So this is what policies are, which will define the permissions attached to users, groups, and roles. So we have understood what are users, we have also understood what are groups, and we have learned what are policies now. Let's look at roles. Now to explain you how IAM rules work, I have this instance created, and I also have an S3 bucket created here. If, don't worry if you don't know how to create EC2 instance or S3 bucket, because I will be explaining you them in the upcoming sessions. Now let's connect to this instance and see if I can access my S3 bucket present here. I'm going to connect to my EC2 instance and I will check if I can access my S3 bucket using AWS CLI. So AWS CLI is a command line interface which is used to manage AWS through this terminal here. I will also be teaching you AWS CLI in the next video. So I have AWS CLI already installed in this instance. 
And if I try to run AWS S3 LS, which is a command to list all the S3 buckets in my account, I get an error saying, unable to locate credentials. You can configure credentials by running AWS configure command. So you can put your credentials, which are AWS keys and access keys. Although it's not a recommended option or not a best practice to put your keys because anyone can get your keys and start using it to do anything else. So AWS does not recommend you using AWS configure command. Although I will show you how to do this or how to create your keys access keys in the next CLI video. And you can do this AWS configure only on EC2. But if you were trying to connect your S3 bucket with EKS cluster, you cannot run this command. So how do you give access? Because you see here, we are not able to access our S3 bucket. So we can do this using IAM role. Let's go and click on roles here. Let's create an IAM role so that our EC2 instance can talk to S3 bucket. So I'm going to click on create role. We are creating this role for an AWS service, which is EC2. I'm going to search for EC2 here. Click on next option. Now this rule is going to be attached a policy. We all know policy is used to define what permissions can a user group or role have. So I want this role to have S3 access so that they can access my S3 bucket here. So I'm choosing S3 full access and click on next option. I can give this a name saying EC2 access S3. So I want to click on create role option. This role is created and this role will only be applicable once I attach this to an instance. So to attach a role, I'm going to click on actions here, click on security, modify IAM rule, and I'm going to select the role present here. So EC2 access S3 and click on update IAM rule. Once I have an IAM rule attached to my instance, I can then click run the same command, which is AWS S3 LS. And this time we can see we have a bucket named as my S3 buckets, which is the same one here. So this is how you can use AWS IAM to connect to different services or to access AWS services in other regions. To show you a few other examples of how IAM roles are used, this is my EKS or Kubernetes cluster. When you create a cluster, you also need to define different roles. So you can see where the role is attached, which is my EKS role. And if you want to check in the IAM dashboard, you can see this is the role attached to my cluster and this role has policy which is Amazon EKS cluster policy. So rules are used in almost every AWS services to access other AWS services. So we are using this role to access different AWS services like auto scaling, EC2, create volume because we want our nodes to be created automatically. So this is IAM rule for you. Now let's go and quickly summarize everything we have learned in this video. So in this video, we have learned about AWS IAM service, which stands for Identity and Access Management. Using IAM, you can control access to your AWS services. So you can create users, groups, and roles. Users are physical users, which you can create accounts for, and they are given username and password to access the console. You can also create access keys to access CLI. We are going to be learning about AWS CLI in the next video. Along with users, you can also create groups. Groups are used to manage multiple users together. So rather than managing a single user individually, you can put them in a group and manage them together. So this is how it is done. If they have same permissions, add them to the group and apply the permissions to the group. If they have different permissions, they can manage individually. Next, we also learn about rules. Rules are used to give access to different AWS services. Next, we have also learned about policies, which are JSON documents that defines what permissions can be attached to users, groups, or roles. I've also included why you should be using AWS IAM and real-world examples for AWS IAM in this notes. If you want me to share this notes with you, comment down AWS IAM tutorial in the comment section. So this was our video on AWS IAM, service which lets you access other AWS services. I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe to CloudChamp and check out the next video on AWS CLI. Bye.